Hello, welcome back to my garden. Actually, we're on the front porch here. Some of you may have seen my recent video, I think it was a week or two ago, uh, about saving a hosta, and it was a filigree hosta that I have right here up on my porch. And you may have been wondering, how is it doing? Or maybe you weren't wondering, but I'm gonna let you know that it's doing well. So for the first time, I don't think I've ever seen so many leaves come up from the base. And this is partially again, because I have deer in the area and they like to munch on hostas. And they would maybe eat half the hosta and then I'd be left with this sort of half hosta thing and it's just very sad and disappointing. But up here on the porch, it's safe from the deer until they decide they wanna start crawling up stairs. But that's another problem for another day. But right now it's doing well, which has given me the courage to then attempt to save another hosta. And today we're gonna to save Empress Wu. Uh, I don't know where the name came from. If you know where the name Empress Wu came from, please let me know in the comments below. But it's a much bigger hosta than the filigree hosta that I have here. So let's go dig it up and we're gonna stick it in the pot up here on the porch. Okay, so here we are. And this is where the filigree hosta was. So we're in the same location by the water barrel here. And this right here is the Empress Wu. Not this, this is a foxglove. Uh, so what I'm gonna try to do today is see if I can get I think the foxglove may come up with it. You know what? We're gonna to try to move this Empress Wu, dig it up. And as you can see, it's already leafing. And we're gonna move it into a pot that's already in place up on the front deck so that I don't have to carry it. So let me get to pulling this up here. This is the tricky part. Uh, I don't think so. I think that <clears throat> foxglove has got to come out. The roots, aren't, the roots aren't so good on this foxglove. You know what? I think I'm going to put this in the compost pile. Even though the top looks pretty good, the roots are kind of bad. I have other foxglove that I'll wind up putting in the same location that are seedlings right now, but I'll put them over here for this year. All right. Well, here it is. All righty. Shake off the excess dirt. I'm actually surprised the roots seem more lateral than they do deep. All right, let's go put this in the pot. All right, so I think I actually want to put a little bit more soil into the bottom of this pot. Smooth all that out. And then we'll put the hosta back in. There we go. Tuck you right in. Some more soil. All right, let's give it a good drink. Uh, now by me giving this a drink, it's doing two things. Obviously A, it's providing water for the plant, but B, it's settling some of that soil. And I now see that I need to add a little bit more in a few spots here. And that should be good. Just a few handfuls. And hopefully the Empress Wu does very well up here. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the Empress Wu gets four to five feet, if not larger. It may not do that the first year. And seeing as I would just transplanted this, it may stay relatively short-ish, let's say three feet this year. I'm not sure. If you've grown Empress Wu before, if you've put it in a pot, if you've done anything like this before, please leave those comments below. Let me know what your experiences were, what your thoughts are. Now this will get dappled sun in the morning, but by mid to, uh, yeah, mid to, I'd say mid afternoon, it's gonna be in complete shade for the rest of the day, which is good. If I have to move it, I will. And that's one of the beautiful things, obviously, about growing things in pots, is if they're not doing well in a certain spot, you can obviously move them. Uh, it, this will be heavy, because I just put a, pretty much a whole bag of potting soil mix in here, but We'll, we will see. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click that bell icon to be notified when I do post a new video. And this way you could find out somewhere down the road whether the Empress Wu is surviving or not. Maybe I'll do an update on it later in the year or maybe it'll just be in passing. Or again, feel free to leave those comments and say, hey, Jay, it's been three months. We haven't heard anything about the hostas. Can you please give us an update on the hostas? And I will. So let's get on to the next project. For the next project, I'm gonna be planting up or start, I'm gonna start planting up some potatoes in my grow bags. 
Now, I have all these wonderful raised beds that you may have noticed if you've been watching the channel for a while, but if you have been watching the channel for a while, you would have seen that last year, or I may have mentioned last year, I don't know if I actually showed you guys because it was so horrible, I grew German butterball perhaps, maybe just German butterball, maybe russet, I'm not sure. Either way, I grew some potatoes in one of the raised beds. Needless to say, the ants found that bed and they devoured the potatoes. They actually drilled holes through the potatoes. The potatoes were like Swiss cheese and they all started to rot. And I'm only guessing it's going after the sugars, maybe the starches, probably definitely the sugars. Uh, then I'm not even sure if there's sugar in the potato. Maybe they're just going for the starch. Either way, leave those comments below. <laughs> but they wound up burrowing through. Once they do that, other insects get in there and then the potato just starts to rot from the, you know, it's just, it's bad news. And so I had a large, stinky raised bed filled with rotten potatoes. Some of the potatoes are actually quite large. Uh, they probably got to about eight, in there was a couple that were about eight inches in size. It was pretty amazing. But again, they were completely inedible because they were rotten or they were filled with holes and it was absolutely horrible. What I wound up doing at the same time as I did the raised bed was I grew a bunch of potatoes in uh, grow bags. This is a small grow bag. We're gonna do a small batch, we're gonna do small potatoes in the small grow bag. But I have larger grow bags that we'll do other potatoes in. Now I'm not gonna plant all my potatoes yet. Uh, and this is for a couple of different reasons. One, I don't have enough potting soil. Two, once I plant these up, I really don't want to be jostling them around too much. Uh, that tends to, you have a risk of breaking up the roots that are growing from the seed potato when you move it. I mean, you can move it, you know, but again, it's not, but it's not a hard container like uh, a pot. And again, many of you experienced gardeners know this. So you could actually wind up damaging the plant a little bit if you move it around too much. So I try not to move it. I basically plant it, forget about it, wait for the whole thing to come up, flower, die back, harvest. Pretty much what I did last year. And it worked out really well. The ants don't get into the into the grow bags. Now me saying that they're going to get into the grow bags this year. So let's, but let's hope not. So I'm going to plant up uh, just a few of the varieties that I have already. Actually, I've gotten, I believe all my potatoes in from, because I only, I had leftover German butterball, Binti, Binchi, bint I'll put the name here, uh, Nicola, and there was, I think, one other maybe. But either way, I had those left over from last year. So those are just a couple of the varieties I'll be planting up. This year, I also purchased Corolla and I purchased Russet. The Russet was actually a late purchase. I just made last week and I received in the mail, I believe yesterday. They were half off at So True Seed, I believe. So if you haven't gone and visited So True Seed, there's links in the description below. Uh, you can go check them out. Uh, otherwise, just SoTrueSeed.com, I believe. I don't know if they have any potatoes left, but if they do, you can get them at a discounted price because I think they're trying to get rid of their inventory and get them shipped out. So I'm gonna stop talking and let's start planting. So the first, first variety I'm gonna be planting is the bin, Binchi, Binchi, I don't know how you pronounce that name. So <laughs> they're very small. I'm gonna actually put two in the bag and Looking at my bag now, I think I had a total of five and the other three look like they are rotting or soft. Let's see what this one. Yeah, that one's no good. So two out of the five seed potatoes that I saved are good. So I'm planting them in this bag. We will see. And then of course, don't forget to label, which I already have. Okay, problem solved. Now it's labeled. So in this one, we're gonna do the binchy. This one's good. I'll do two in here. The rest of these look rotted. Then the Nicola. That one's skeptical. I'm skeptical on that one. This one looks good. Tag there. And last but not least, German butterball. I have in all of these bags basically two seed potatoes. One may take, both may take, but I don't want to do more than that. I have made that mistake in the past where I put, let's say three or four, and then there's just not enough room for the new potatoes to grow. So they don't get very big if they grow at all. It's something weird with the plants being too congested. That's just my experience. If you've experienced different, let me know in the comments below. This is the edge of the raise of the in-ground bed that I have. Right now it's still covered up with junk and black weed fabric, but I will be uncovering this in the upcoming uh, week or two, probably next two weeks 
because as the weather gets warmer, it'll, it'll be time to start planting. So this will all get cleaned up. These bags will basically stay here. And this way, as I water the in-grounds, I water the bags. I have more potatoes in the garage. So this was just the start of it. Now we're not expecting any freezes for at least the next 10 days. Mother Nature in Canada could still throw a freeze at us, but I'm fairly confident at this point they're not going to. The next few nights and days are gonna be cool. Uh, the nighttime temperatures will get down to 40. It's not really gonna hurt these potatoes. Uh, they should be fine here in the ground, especially with the black uh, cloth here. It'll just keep the soil warm. And hopefully I'm harvesting, if I'm planting now, maybe let's say, let's say roughly 30 days. So we're in early April, May, June, figure sometime mid to late June. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. I did a video last year about harvesting my potatoes. I will probably do the same thing again this year. I'll show you my, what happened and, and what I got and what the results were. At this point, it's all up to the plants and mother nature. And talk about lack of freezes over the next 10 days. I've already begun moving many of my plants out here to the potting bench and the table here in front of it. Uh, some of these, are shrubs. Others I have, these are snapdragons. They can tolerate a cold, the cold weather, uh, again, like 40 degrees uh, that we may wind up having on Sunday night. Over here, we've got some, what are these my wife bought the other day? Super Tunia Vista bubble gums. She plans on doing some pots to the front porch where we're at. I have a ton of foxgloves. Again, they can handle the colder temperatures. Uh, like 40. Uh, if they were more mature and well-established plants, then they could handle a freeze because I have plants out in the garden right now that have never lost their leaves. They never died back to the ground because we don't, we don't freeze here in growing zone 8B long enough. There's lots and lots of plants just here that will be planted out in the upcoming weeks. In the greenhouse, there's even more stuff. Some of it is zinnias and marigolds. They will stay in there until next week or the week after, once I'm sure that there's no more 40 degree nights because they really don't like the cold, cold temps. And then I'll start planting them out. Some of this stuff like the foxglove, I will probably start planting out as early as next week because the temperatures at nighttime are supposed to be getting into the 50s and the 60s. So these shouldn't have no problem getting established and getting going. So there's a lot that's gonna be happening in the upcoming weeks so far as planting, as I'm sure all of you guys are doing uh, with you know starting to plant stuff out. And yes, we're, there's gonna be lots of planting, lots of planting. <laughs> so the garden is just coming alive all over the place. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, give a follow on Instagram or if you don't want to sign up for another social media account, go over to growinggreenfinger.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the homepage, and I have my Instagram photos also reflected there, so you could check them out there uh, without having to sign up for another social media account. And I often post the pictures there of the daffodils or the snapdragons that are starting to come to life, the, the Dutch irises. I, you know, I bought some Dutch irises. I didn't even know they were... I, bought this thing, it looked beautiful, called Discovery Dutch Iris. Little did I know Discovery was sort of like the name of a Dutch Iris. Now I know, <laughs> I'm starting knowing and seeing how beautiful they look. I think this is their second or third year in the ground over here in the Rose Garden that I, I just, I wanna get more and I probably will get more. And this way there's more color, more interest in the springtime garden, which is always my goal. It's always been my goal gardening to have interest all year long. So you have spring flowers and summer flowers and flowers in the fall and, and maybe something in the winter. I'm almost done with my latest book. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you the title yet. I'm just gonna tease you with it, but that'll be coming out soon. If you haven't checked out my current book, Pictures from My Garden, please head over to Amazon or head over to my Etsy store where it's just a little bit cheaper and maybe pick yourself up a copy. So if you here wanted me to tell you about all the links below, uh, all, yeah, all right, all right. Also, don't forget to subscribe, click that bell icon to be notified when I do post up a new video, and this way you can follow along. So that's about it for today. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.